So more 10th edition model goodness today. Looks like Games Workshop has shown off the poster boys in full. Let's talk about the full squad reveal for the Space Marine Terminators. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where Games Workshop has been keeping the 10th edition reveals and previews coming thick and fast. And today it seems that Terminators are on the agenda, with a full squad of 5 of them confirmed, plus a friendly teleport home. Alongside the actual model reveals, Games Workshop have also given us a teaser trailer of the Terminators. In the video, they have been playing the nostalgia card pretty hard, I think. Both in their article and their teaser video, they talk quite a lot about how Terminator armor has been evolving since Games Workshop first came out with it back in the Rogue Trader era, making sure that people have put these new suits in context of all the 40k releases that come before. Definitely makes it feel a bit more storied than, say, some of the new and techie Primaris Gravis armor and things that we've seen recently. And then perhaps the coolest bit is where they show off a bunch of rotated images of the Terminators in different iconic chapter colour schemes. We've got Salamanders, Space Wolves and Dark Angels Deathwing among others. It does look pretty awesome to have the Terminators realised in your own chapter's colour scheme I think. Getting back to the main squad, and previously we'd only seen two of these Terminators, a chap with the assault cannon on the top left hand corner out of these, plus one of the guys with the Storm Bolter and Power Fist. I did strongly suspect that there would be a squad of five of these, given that how there's always been fielded in the past, though I had seen a fair bit of chatter about people thinking that they might be coming in a squad of three, say similar to the Primaris Blade Guard veterans or the Eradicators or something. I guess they are models on a very similar sort of weight and size level. I am glad that they've stuck to five of them though. I feel like a squad of three Terminators would have just felt very weird, just not how they've ever been fielded before in the past. As expected from that online reveal trailer, it does look like the sergeant is keeping his iconic war gear. The sergeant's got a power sword and storm bolter. Plus there's a couple of other interesting little modelling details on him, standing on a sliver of tactical rocky outcrop. Plus he's got a bit of a bigger pennant charm with some litanies or something on hanging off the front of him. The red head also denotes that he's the Ultramarines Terminator sergeant as well. That one does rather bring back some classic Terminator vibes. Reminds me of an old box set. In the past, the power sword on the Terminator Sergeant has generally been a bit of a weak point of the box. For the most part, the power fists on the Terminators are generally more exciting weapons to be fighting with, punching up against big things like tanks and vehicles, whereas the power swords are only really all that good for medium to light infantry. I kind of hope that when they redo the rules for these guys, they might find a way to actually make the power sword into a genuinely threatening combat weapon. I feel like making it a mastercrafted power sword with damage 2 would probably be a good idea. At least that way to feel a bit more in parity with the Terminators with the Power Fist, and not often the model that you might actually want to kill off first to save yourself losing the valuable fist. The old Terminator squad does come with a teleport homer, and it seems like that's still going to be very much a thing in the new models. I guess it did feature pretty heavily in the Tyranids vs Terminators battle, and the model really looks like it's supposed to represent that little thing flashing in the trailer. A little probe fired at the combat area to guide the teleport strike for the Terminators to come down without some sort of deep strike mishap. Currently in game it's got a bit of a weird mechanic where you can use that to jump the squad back to your own deployment zone or something. Hopefully they might find some sort of rules way to use it a bit more aggressively as it was in the trailer. Otherwise, in general, the squad's got the same fairly sleek, uncluttered aesthetic as it did in the ones that we've seen already. Lots of big spaces that you could put transfers or freehand on if you wanted to. I did quite like that Salamander's one in the Spin Around trailer. He seems to have acquired some nice flames painted onto his power fist. I did notice as well that the chap on the top right-hand corner has got the blue and white checked pattern on the power fist. That is very, very similar to the one that we saw in the artwork. The one that I suspect might well be on the front of the box set for the Tyranids vs Terminators launch box. Speaking of which, my guess is that this box set will probably be a monopose set for the launch box. The Terminators that you can see here will probably be the only ones that you can build. A set loadout with the Storm Bolters, Assault Cannon and Power Sword Sergeant. They often tend to keep the sprues in the first box set kind of limited to pack in more models rather than extra options. And then my guess would be maybe similar to how the Assault Intercessors came out is that they'd likely follow this up with a full flexible plastic kit, probably giving you extra options like a Cyclone Missile Launcher and Heavy Flamer, and maybe the Assault Terminator options as well, unless they get put in their own box. Games Workshop did show us off a few other paint schemes as well. We've got a rather nice picture of a Space Wolf Terminator, an Imperial Fist one with the Assault Cannon, and then a Dark Angels Deathwing Terminator, perhaps particularly relevant at the moment with Mr. Lionel Johnson and Azrael coming back. Really good news for the Dark Angels, I think. While things like Outrider bikes might fit in okay with Ravenwing, they didn't really have a proper equivalent to go in the Deathwing. 
I wasn't really the biggest fan of just painting the Blade Guard veterans in bone colour and having them work that way. Deathwing are basically a Terminator formation, and now they've actually finally got a new release Terminator model that they can field if they want to that's Primaris kind of scale. The other thing that this Terminator squad did make me think of was thinking back to this box set, which was one of the ones that was available when I was first getting into Warhammer 40k. Very much a classic plastic Space Marine Terminator offering this, back with the goblin green bases, the bright red guns on the Ultramarines, and I feel like it harks back to that a bit just by the way that they've painted some of these, particularly the red and white sergeant helmet really feels the same sort of way, plus the bit of checked freehand on the power fist feels not too dissimilar from the hazard stripes on these old ones. It's definitely got a bit of a retro feel, but updated to modern sensibilities. Overall, I think they've done pretty well with this Terminator release. They generally seem to have gone down well as the poster boys of 10th edition so far. A classic set of miniatures that people were genuinely a little bit unsure if Games Workshop would ever update again, but then upscaled and redone in really quite a nice way. Bigger and chunkier to fit in with the Primaris. Better proportions with the head and legs and things, and better posing so it looks a bit more like there's a man in the Terminator armour as opposed to the arms and legs sticking out at some pretty weird angles. And I feel like they have improved the look of all their ranged weapons in particular. They look quite a lot nicer. As I spoke about in a video earlier in the week as well, I think it's really quite nice that they're both Primaris and Firstborn models. They have confirmed that they represent both of them on the battlefield, and that's helpful both from a lore and a rules point of view, I think. From a lore point of view, having models that represent either is a good way to start to reunify the Space Marine range, which kind of feels like it has been hacked in half a bit between the Firstborn and Primaris units. Plus it's pretty nice rules-wise, if there's no distinction between the two, it should mean that they should be able to ride in any transport that they want to, and wouldn't be locked out of important stratagems that might be Primaris restricted, say for example transhuman physiology at the moment. Then, as mentioned, I'd guess they'd probably follow this up with a multi-part plastic kit, Cyclone missile launchers and heavy flamers seem like a very high likelihood. I guess we'll wait and see whether or not we get thunder hammers and storm shields and lightning claws. I feel like we almost certainly will at some stage, though it's more the question whether or not they will be in the same multi-part box set or they will be an individual one sold alongside. Really not too sure which way they'd go on this one. It will be a lot of extra parts to put in a box, but I'm sure with the high prices that are likely charged for a multi-part kit, it's probably not undoable. With Dark Angels in the spotlight, I guess there'd also be the possibility of a Deathwing upgrade set for them, or even a whole standalone box set given recent Dark Angels releases. I'm not sure how eager I'd be with that one. I feel like for Games Workshop, often what they want to do is to get the generic models out first, and then maybe when the excitement has died down for those, then follow it up with some more specialist upgrades, rather than just hitting everyone with literally every flavour of Terminator at once. I'm sure Dark Angels will get a Black Templar style range refresh at some stage, I guess the question is whether they're going to do it now that their Primark's back, or whether they'll hold off till later. Finally, I thought as we go through with these releases, Games Workshop are basically going to be in the process of revealing their 10th edition launch box at the moment, and I thought it would be interesting to check off some confirmations on some of the units within. I made a full video on the potential for a 10th edition launch box earlier in the day. Feel free to check that out if you'd like to see the breakdown for all this, but I guess we can pretty much tick one entry off the list now. We've got five Terminators confirmed with a Power Sword, Assault Cannon, and now also the confirmation of a Teleport Homer which I've added in. It'll be interesting to follow along with this, see how much is right, and update it when we get new models. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new stuff just about every day. If you'd like to check out another recent development in the world of Warhammer, then I'll leave a link down below to my rules review of Lionel Johnson with Games Workshop's latest previews. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos and updates on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's what allows me to keep on making videos like this as my main thing rather than working on a regular job. If you have been enjoying a lot or just want to help support and keep the videos coming, then any support on the Patreon page is enormously appreciated. It's what allows me to do what I do. I do try and give a few rewards for Patreon backers. You get to see certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.